I might hoop. <laughs> My auntie, all right. Nah, you don't want to hear that. Mm-mm, I mess it up. But look at somebody and say, godly conviction. godly conviction. The last thing you want to happen on earth is for conviction to stop speaking to you. That's a bad place to be in. You want to pray for conviction. God, please convict me. If I'm wrong, if I'm doing wrong or doing someone wrong, please convict me. Because I don't want to die in my sin. Amen. You want conviction. No matter who you are, I don't think you above the law. The law is the law. God's law is the law. You're not above it. So you need his spirit to convict you so you'll stop doing what you're doing. So look at somebody and say godly conviction. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash godly conviction dot pdf. Y'all are so blessed too because a lot of y'all are just young. And you able to get this message and plant this message in you when you're young so that it'll, when you grow, the right things will grow from those seeds. Amen? It is my responsibility as your pastor to preach you straight. What do you think church is? You straight, me straight, everybody. Preach us straight. Because we're humans, and we're not just humans, but we're up against... We're up against the same wicked world they were up against in the Bible days, but ours is technically wicked. That's a little different. That hit a little different. It was easier to go off in a, 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 to a house to yourself and get away from things back then. Now you get away and your phone's still dinging. Social media is a web that will wrap around you and hold you hostage just like a spider spun it. Spider wraps his prey up in a web and then leave him right there. I'll come back later. And that's what social media is doing to this generation, making you totally insensitive to what is right and wrong. And we forget what is right and what is wrong. Then, you know, it's just a, a process. Then we start believing what is wrong is okay. Then we start Hating on the people that's going against what's wrong. Then we're reprobate. Like the old folks say, and can't get saved. You know, the old folks used to say that. You reprobate, you can't get saved. Well, you, basically, you can't if your mind is, is gone and you already think you're okay the way you are. Amen. You done fell off in a crazy belief system and Believing that the black folks are the chosen, whatever you believe in, you wrapped up in that. Can't nobody get you out? You're in trouble. Yeah. But you didn't just jump into that. That's a path that took you into that. Yeah. Can I keep going in here? I'm going to preach the truth. I don't care. The flesh. Like my daddy used to say, the flesh. I don't know why he read it like that. The flush. We need to flush the flesh. <laughs> Maybe that's what he meant. But the flesh has a will that is against God. Amen? When you try to pray, your flesh says, ah, you too tired. Yeah. Don't get down on the side of the bed. Just go on and lay there this time. You start doing that, then you start to lay down prayers. Next comes the sleepyhead prayer. Oh, Lord. You good. You good. Oh, yeah. That's how it happened. That's how it happened. You got to get yourself up and go somewhere. Get in another room and intentionally talk to the Lord. Don't be giving, look at somebody and say, don't give him the sleepy head prayer. Everybody's done it, so go on and say, don't you act like you haven't done that. You've done it. (laughs) 
But that's what happens. The flesh. That's the flesh. But you'll get up and you'll do what needs to be done for a paycheck. Or you'll get up and do what needs to be done so somebody can see it and say you did well. Aren't you concerned about what God thinks? Are you concerned about him thinking and saying that it is well? Look at somebody and say, get up next time. Just get up. Now, if you get up and pray or whatever, and then you decide to pray laying down, that's one thing. But if all your prayers are prostrate in the bed, under covers, two pillars, and crust on the side of your face, get up and wash your face. You'll wake up. You stuck to the pillar. Can't even say the words. Oh, God. Oh, indeed, a name. Your own breath stopped you from praying. Oh, I can't continue this. <laughs> that means you need to get up and brush your teeth. Get up, fix yourself up. Amen. But the flesh, <laughs> the flesh, and I'm telling the truth, and people are convicted. They're convicted. I'm describing last night to some folks. I'm describing what happened this morning. But the flesh has a will, and it is against God. It's against God because its desire, the flesh's desire, lacks prudence. So your flesh is never thinking about the long-term outcome. It's always thinking about what you want or need right now. This is what I want to do. But the long-term effect of that is going to be whatever. Your flesh don't care about the long-term eventually this is going to come to a head and you're going to be no, your flesh don't care your flesh, your flesh lacks prudence Galatians 5 and 17 for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh these things are contrary one to another that ye cannot do the things that you would so the things you want to do you can't do because your flesh won't let you Is that anybody's flesh? Am I describing anybody's flesh in here? It's all quiet, but folk act like they got it together. No, you ain't gonna ever get the flesh together. The dude writing this was who we would have thought was together. This is Paul. And he's saying, nope, I gotta do something about my own flesh. That's a constant rebuke. Amen. Your flesh ain't gonna ever settle down. In other words, our flesh is cursed by man's disobedience in the garden. So it seeks to please itself without consideration for what? The future. Genesis 3 and 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to, be, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and what? Did eat. Then gave it to her husband and he did eat. None of them thinking about the future. What's the consequence of this? She was, when the devil first approached her, she mentioned what God said. Oh, no, no, God said this and that. But by the time the devil finished in this passage, it doesn't mention God at all. She just saw what she wanted at that moment with no consideration for us. You know when you do this, you messing all of us up. But she just wanted it and took it. Amen. Now God forgave her, but man, there were consequences to this that she didn't consider. Amen. Old folk don't like these kind of messages. We look at somebody and say, I need this. I need this. Amen. Amen. 
If you couldn't say that, it's a demon. And we're going to cast it out. God controls our spirit, but we control our flesh and temper it. Do you hear that? So God controls our spirit, but our flesh is under our control. It's up to us to get our flesh together. Yeah. You control your flesh. You know how you control your flesh? Killing it. How do you kill it? Don't give it what it wants. That's why we fast, to kill our flesh. Amen. But folks that always have Fat Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. I mean, if you're going to eat for Tuesday and Wednesday, then Wednesday's fast don't count. How you storing up food like a hamster in your cheek during the fast? It's not a fast. Fasting. You already got Thursday's meal planned out. And you spend the whole fast day thinking about Thursday's meal. You're not fasting. If you're doing that, you need to go on and go Thursday too. Look at somebody. Wait. <laughs> You know, you're over spiritualizing it no I'm not <laughs> if all day on the fast day you thinking about eating the next day you might as well eat now being hungry we gonna be hungry and if you're around something you gonna smell everything you gonna have the smell of a turkey vulture you gonna smell chips opening cookies packages you go everywhere But that don't mean you planning, okay, this is what I'm going to eat. Every time you get hungry, oh, I can't wait till tomorrow. Because, see, I'm going to go get me a Big Bob's burger. You know, they put gravy on the whole burger. Just smother it in gravy. Look at somebody, really? Where, where, where is that? Where, 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 where is that restaurant? That sounds awesome. I think you might have invented something. But, yeah. So, we temper our flesh, control our flesh. We do this by yielding to God's conviction through repentance and changing our ways. Yielding to God's conviction. Nobody is going to ask me what does God's conviction sound like. You don't have to. Because you feel it every time. Before you sin. Yes, you do. Because if you don't feel it, you ain't saved. The spirit isn't in you. Because if the spirit is in you, it's going to convict you. That's his job. That's his job. That's what he was assigned to us to do. You have to keep telling him no and ignoring him. Because he's going to speak. Yeah. When you're going to talk bad about somebody, the spirit will say, don't, don't say that. And you have to override him. Yeah. But if you keep doing it over and over and over, you'll get to the point to where you won't hear the spirit. You'll just hear what you want to do. That's reprobate. Can I, can I keep going in here? Okay. Yeah. Proverbs 30, 25 and 28. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. No barriers. No boundaries. you just out there. But the key to this passage is he that hath no rule over what? Over what? His own spirit. That means you have to have control. How do you get the right rule over your spirit? You submit your spirit to God's spirit and not your flesh. God's spirit and your flesh are fighting for control of your spirit. Can I keep preaching? When the Holy Spirit is present in us, 
The Spirit of God testifies of itself by telling us we are doing the wrong thing. When the Holy Spirit is in you, it will testify of itself and tell you you are doing the wrong thing. Has the Spirit ever told you that? Yeah. You know you're wrong. That's why you feel, you know that feel bad is significant. That feel bad, that wish I hadn't done it. Can't even look in the mirror because I'm so embarrassed. I'm ashamed. I shouldn't have said that to her. You think about it. I got to go. I got to go make that right. I got to go talk to him. I got to make that. Why? Because you feel bad. That's conviction. This is godly conviction. You don't ever want that to stop. But the way it stops is because you stop it. I believe a person can get to the point where they grieve the spirit so bad that they're pretty much on their own now. Because they've decided to go their own way. They're going to stand before God. God, I thought, I thought, God's like, hey, I was there. I tried. You ignored me. What you wanted to do was more important. Can I keep preaching? John 15 and 26. But when the comforter is come, the Holy Ghost, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of what? That's what the spirit of God is. It's the spirit of truth. So it's going to keep coming and telling you the truth about what you're doing. It proceeded from the Father. He shall do what? Testify of me. Testify of his boundaries. Testify of his morality. Testify of his holiness. I like this translation of John 16 and 8. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin. He's the convictor to make you feel bad when you end some stuff. Amen? When God convicts us, we can either obey his voice or deal with the consequences of our disobedience. Amen. And consequences are just trash. When you knew better. When he kept telling you what's going to happen if you keep going. Ignoring the conviction of the Lord for, a, for long periods of time will create a reprobate thought process where we can no longer gauge our behavior you don't even see what you're doing as bad as you used to see it that's almost like you giving yourself a pass or God you think God is going to grade you on a curve because you've done it so long you no longer see how bad it is you can't gauge it anymore because you have ignored conviction for too long Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah. I know it's a convicting message. I know. Ooh. Yes. This is what the Lord told me and showed me. Amen. We, we will then lose our desire to correct our wrongs. It's easy for the devil to just drop in there that everybody else is wrong. And you go to looking at the wrong that others are doing. Then you start measuring yourself based on wrongs that you think others are doing. And if they doing it and whatever, then what's wrong with me doing it? Yeah. But you'll lose your desire to correct your wrongs. I mean, you come in church and preachers preach it, but he ain't preaching to you. Because you think he's preaching to somebody else. Yeah, message like this come, you thinking of people in here that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just looking around. It's you! <laughs> Amen! It's all of us! <laughs> well, you know, I stopped. I stopped stabbing people. I, 
I stop that. I don't carry my switchblade no more. Nothing but sharp keys now. <laughs> Just in case I have a relapse. But I stopped it that. I stopped it that. Yeah, but you're still cussing. You're still talking about people. You gossiping. You're still slandering. You're maliciously going after folks you're jealous of. But it ain't as bad as stabbing, is it? It's all sin. You are stabbing with your tongue. The Bible said the tongue is filled full of deadly poison. It's going to kill just like a knife. So this message is for you. You got to stop that too. Yeah, but you'll create a reprobate thought process where you can no longer gauge your behavior. Then you're just crazy. Then you wonder why nobody like you. Nobody inviting us over their house and nobody want to spend time with us. That's because every time you start talking about the pastor. You can't, I, we ain't going over there with you. Your house might blow up. I don't want to be around it. I don't want to be at the scene of the crime. You comfortable with that because you've done it for so long. You comfortable with that because conviction doesn't speak to you about that anymore. You've adopted that as the way you do things. Call yourself being a Berean. I'm a Berean. I'm a Berean. I, you know, I got, no, you're not. You're a bad church member. You ain't no Berean. You're a gossiper. Amen. Well, can I preach in here? It's gone. Oh, I know. I feel it. I feel it. The hair is on the back of my neck. Man, it's the end times. I ain't got time for the devil in 2022. I don't have time for your devils in 2022. But Romans 1 and 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in, in their knowledge. So they didn't want to hear the conviction of God. They didn't want to hear, you know, because the conviction of God will tell you, stop talking about him and pray for him. Because you're no different. You're no better. So if you pray, maybe what you thinking might change. You don't want to do that because it was never about them being helped anyway. It was about you turning somebody down because you're insecure about yourself. So you're not going to pray. You're not going to pray. Oh, no, I'm not going to pray for them. Pray for them. Oh, no, no, I'm not. It's beyond prayer. They can't be helped with prayer. Well, can you be helped with prayer? Well, I mean, well, see, you done not yourself out. I'm not getting so mad at somebody that I'm going to X my own way out. Amen. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain what? Romans 21, 1 and 28 says they didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. They wanted, they wanted to stop hearing what God had to say. So God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Yeah, God ain't going to battle with you and your will. You don't want to listen to him. He's going to give you over to your will. And you're just going to be that way. But God, this is how they got that way. God kept telling them, don't do that. You hurting your own blessing. I'm trying to bless you and you won't shut up. And then over time, they stop hearing it, stop hearing it, stop hearing God. And now the loudest voice in them is their will. Louder than the pastor preaching. Louder than the scriptures. Then you start looking for dumb stuff. Mm -hmm, ain't nobody in here got their Bibles. You're looking for dumb stuff. Well, the scriptures are on the screen. I know, but you got to have your sword. Well, I, don't know. I have a weapon. I have a Bible at home. Oh, but when you don't have it, see, you can't check out what the preacher's preaching. It's on, how many? One, two, three, four. How many back there? Five, six. Seven. Seven screens with the scripture on it. 
Seven screens with the scripture. Oh, but you can't trust that. See, because they something somebody could have changed that. Who printed the Bible? Somebody? Did somebody print the Bible? You were just looking for something. Why are you looking for something? Can I keep preaching in here? Hey, boy, please. Many that were once true believers have adopted sinful lifestyles and now they practice it daily. A sinful lifestyle. I ain't talking about homosexuality and murder and adultery and all of that. I, don't, I mean, those things happen in the church. But I'm talking about the stuff that folks won't even think twice about. Hatred? Do you know if you hate your brother, you will not see Jesus? Malice? Sitting around thinking how you're going to get somebody back? These are lifestyle practices of believers. Some believers so bitter they just sit up when they get old. They lips start just testifying of their bitterness. That old piranha mouth. You okay, sister? I'm smiling. You just done got so bitter. Your face can't be fixed. What you mad at? Because the pastor don't never call on me to do a solo. You can't see. You sound horrible. But many believers that were once true believers have adopted sinful lifestyles and now they practice it daily. They become sinful daily while still believing they are in good standing with the Lord. You know, I had a man tell me one time, the way you know you're in good standing with the Lord is when you stay repentant. We all have fallen short, all of that, but we stay repentant. And when a message like this happened, <laughs> you know what time it is. Time to clean house. House might have already been clean. Well, most of the rooms. There might be a dirty room somewhere. Or you might be doing like I used to do when I was growing up. I just sweep everything under the refrigerator. <laughs> I, my mama, when it was time for me to sweep, I'd sweep it right out of the refrigerator. And she walked in there one day, the refrigerator was just. <laughs> no, I remember it broke down or something, and my daddy had to move it. <laughs> he didn't need no help, he could move it with one finger. It was so much trash on there, it just slid. <laughs> Years of trash. What is all this trash, my daddy? Under this refrigerator. Craig. Probably Tanya. Craig. He been sweeping. I saw him one day. He don't. He sweeps it under the refrigerator. I was. I, man, I'm just like, man, I ain't no sweeper. <laughs> that ain't what I'm going to be when I grow up. It's a, it's what I don't do it. No, I have nothing to do with my future. <laughs> By the time I grow up, they're gonna have the Roomba. The Roomba going there and just working out on his own. Uh, uh, you got a sweet. <laughs> Man, I got a beating. We used to get whoopings for that kind of stuff. What no well, time out in a spanking and take your phone. What no phone? Take that house phone with the dial and the long cord to facilitate all the rooms. I got a, I, it's a private call. I, I need to go in the garage. Y'all don't get in the way of this cord. <laughs> I remember my daddy came home. I got a cordless phone. Y'all, we got a cordless phone. I said, <laughs> that's an FBI's phone. It was so big, and it had a car antenna on it. I said, that's the biggest cordless phone I've ever seen. The first cordless phone. Have y'all ever seen those? 
use D batteries. It would limit your call time because your arm would get tired. My goodness, I need to prop up against something and use this. They don't tell it what this antenna is doing to my brain because it's pretty big. Okay, let me move on. I'm tired, y'all. Elder said, he said, boy, it's going to be deaf comedy jamming at the bar. You, you tired? Let me move on! Mm. Uh, <laughs> you know, I struggle when I get tired. It just stuff starts getting funny. But the Bible said in 1 John 3 and 10, these people think they're in good standing. By this, it is evident who are the children of God. Listen. And who are the children of the devil? Y'all want to know who's the children of God and who's the children of the devil? Scripture going to tell us. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Nor is the one who what? <laughs> Scripture will preach, won't it? I didn't have to say nothing and conviction just flew all over this room. Practice righteousness, not sin, and love your brother. That means you forgive them. Yeah. And you pray for them. If you can't pray for them, you haven't forgiven them. And if you're praying doom and destruction on them, you haven't forgiven them. Can I preach in here? When your will becomes stronger than God's will, the devil's voice becomes stronger in you than God's voice. Galatians 6 and 8, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. Everlasting life. So whatever you're sowing to is going to get stronger. So when your will becomes stronger, when what you want to do becomes stronger than what God wants you to do, the devil's voice Become stronger. How do I know the devil's voice from God's voice? Your will? Is your will submitted to God? Then you're going to hear God's voice. Is your will submitted to the devil? Then you're going to hear the devil's voice. They're going to sound the same because they're spiritual. You're going to think it's God. And it's the devil agreeing with what you want to do. Man, I'm preaching in here. You're going to think it's the devil. You're going to start, oh, Lord, you're going to start having dreams and visions from the devil. I had to go to blocking folks that had dreams and visions for me. Because I know that's not God. I know God ain't going to speak to you because you haven't been even faithful in fellowship with me. I don't want to hear it. You will begin to believe that God is saying things and showing you dreams, visions, and plans based on your prolonged defiance of his conviction. Because you kept prolonging the defiance and standing against his conviction and not hearing his conviction. You put yourself in a disposition where the devil is feed you spiritual things and you think it's God. You can't prophesy to me if you hate somebody. You can't speak to me spiritually with hate in your heart because it won't be God. You can't prophesy to me if you got a problem with me. Ain't that ridiculous? Mm, see, brother. The Lord said, shut up, witch. Witch. I don't want to hear that. I had a dream about You don't know how to dream till you got mad at me. I don't want to hear about your pizza dream. How many pizza boxes was surrounding your bed before you had that dream?
chicken bones. You was doing a seance. You didn't even know it. You was, that was Santeria, all them bones. <laughs> Buffalo wing sauce all on your shirt. You ain't, boy, that dream wasn't from God. Ranching. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> See, <laughs> you got to keep me going, Elder. You just got to pull my oil handle coat tail. You got to just keep, keep me going. Yeah, say that. That'll keep me. <laughs> Try it in my body. <laughs> yeah, but you'll begin to believe this is God. All this God. God said. God showed me. God said he showed me. God told me. So, brother, calm down. First of all, I have a relationship with the Lord. Second of all, I have discernment from the Lord. So I try every spirit. Everything. Yeah. Romans 7 and 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. This is Paul saying, my flesh is messed up. There's no good thing in it. So if I get in the flesh, it's going to corrupt everything. My dreams, my visions, what I think God said. If I'm in the flesh, it'll be fleshly. And I'll think it's from God. Your flesh will lie to you. Yes, it will. You can't trust at all. You can't trust every dream you had. Every inclination, every feeling. Mm -mm. Especially if you're feeling a way about somebody. If you have a disposition of hatred or disdain for someone. You can't trust what you see about them. Amen. If I'm mad at somebody, I ain't trying to dream nothing about them. I don't want them in my dreams. And then how do I go to them if I have a problem with them? And tell them, brother, I dream, you know, I, mean, I don't like you no way. But, you know, God said, but shut up, man. Let somebody else go to them that don't have nothing to do with it. You're too emotionally involved. That's your flesh. Your flesh will speak and sound just like God. That's why we got all these online prophets and online folks. Nobody to reel them in. They saying whatever they thinking. Speaking from their flesh. They don't even know humans. They've never even had a conflict. They've never been close to people. So everything they say is callous. Fleshly. Can I keep preaching? Amen. Now there are authentic prophets and all that. Please don't get me wrong. But, you're, but how you feel will affect what you're saying. If you don't check it. Some even believe they are doing a work for the Lord. Even though it goes against God's will and his word. You think you're doing a work for the Lord? Really? And what you're doing is going against scripture? People do it. The devil will try to use them to destroy people with their lying, religious, and untempered spirit. All because they refuse, listen, to yield and obey God's conviction of their sin. 1 John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Amen. Ain't no try the spirit by the spirit. Ooh, that's not in there. It's not in there because what's what? Try the spirit by what? Your spirit? That try the spirit by the spirit is really trying the spirit by your feelings. That's all it is. And we don't do that. You don't try the spirit by how you feel. How you feel will get you in trouble. I 
can discern though. I'm a discerner. So if I see somebody and I can look at what they're doing, I can see what they're about. No, you can't. The Bible didn't tell you to discern a human. It told you to discern spirits. That's different. Anybody can discern a human. Does the Bible tell you ain't nothing good in the flesh? Man, I'm preaching. Am I preaching, Jay Bryan? You look like I'm preaching. <laughs> because many false prophets are going out in the world, so you don't try the spirit by the spirit. You may log on and hear somebody saying something that makes you feel good. That don't mean it's true. But you tried it by your spirit and you liked it because it fit. Especially when it's against somebody you don't like already. Oh, that felt real good. Oh, listen to him. Oh, he's a prophet of the whoo, whoo, ah! <laughs> You just agreeing because y'all mad at the same person. <laughs> well, the Bible said the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> See, <laughs> the Bible didn't say. <laughs> Summary! Somebody wanted more. Is that it? No, that's not it. Two whole summary pages. Y'all need this. We all, well, let me say, we all need this. Amen. Folks make me mad. It's just, you know, it's a reflex for me to talk about them. Find some, I mean, find something wrong with them and then just deal with it. <laughs> and so the Lord has been dealing with me about that. Quit, you know, no, 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 no. That ain't my spirit. Amen. So I'm working on it. Elder. Can I work on it? Y'all give me a little grace to work on it. They make me awfully mad though sometimes. Elder. And I think it's just kind of for me to make fun of them. Doesn't actually hurt them. I have fixed it in my mind to where if it's in the privacy of my home, it's legal by the Lord's standards. I have fixed it. problem the Lord had when it is you ain't praying for them. you talking about them you can't pray for them. but I, I can high side them and then pray for that that I high side it against <laughs> no man we can't be fixing it man we gotta love each other amen you wanted somebody to love you when you was a wretched wretch like the old folks say when you was a wretch undone what is that's terrible? A rich undone? It just sounds bad. But the flesh will get you out there, and many times you can't seem to get back. Paul said that he had to bring his body under subjection of God so he would not be a what? A castaway. He did not. Now, this is Paul. So, Paul could have easily said, Well, since God is using me to write the Bible, can't nothing really happen to me till I finish the Bible because God wouldn't have called me to write the Bible if I couldn't finish it. So, I can just, just keep, leave my flesh unchecked. And I'll be fine because I am writing the Bible. And he saw, oh, he saw into the future. Oh, he saw the completed work before he pulled me back and started to work. So I have to finish. So I can keep sin and all this other stuff in my life because I know I, I'm going to finish. No, that's not the position Paul took. Paul said he got to bring his body under subjection so he wouldn't be a castaway. Oh, listen to the hand claps. Yeah. He did not want sin to shipwreck and immobilize him. This is a warning to us all. A warning to us all. Never allow the enemy to stop godly conviction when it comes. When God pricks your heart to make you feel you are doing someone or something wrong, never silence it and never override it. Amen. 
Make it right. Look at somebody and say, make it right. And settle it. Or you will begin, this is what will happen if you don't settle it. If you keep doing it, you stay in that sin, this is what will happen. You'll begin to justify your feelings instead of receiving how God feels about them. If you allow sin to fester in you, make it commonplace and stay in it, it will take control of your life. You will then begin to make decisions based on it. Build your life around it and settle into all that the sin brings. Y'all, this right here is scary. This is scary because people will, they'll begin to profit off of it. This is Hollywood, movie stars, recording artists. Nowadays, it's just gossip colonists on the internet. And you making money now talking about people. You got to totally shut conviction off or it will mess with your money. You can't even repent. It's much harder to repent and turn away when you have adopted it as a lifestyle and in many cases profited from it. Talk to these athletes. I talk to these celebrities when I'm talking to them. Like, man, what should I do? I say, quit. You know, not all athletes, but some of them are into some stuff. They need to quit. I said, only way you're going to, you got to quit. Stop singing. Stop performing. Just stop. I mean, you telling me to give up my whole life. Dude, you don't understand. This is my whole I'm like, bro, You asked me. You built your life on sand. The winds and waves have come to blow your house down. Brother, I don't have an answer other than quit. Stop. But because they ignored conviction for so long, they put themselves out there for so far. I mean, so far, they put themselves out there. It's hard to get back. It's hard to, for them to even see themselves getting back. Because they profited from it. Can I keep preaching? These are people that have become reprobate in the faith and no longer desire to change because of what the change will cause them to lose. But remember, no matter how long you may go on ignoring the conviction of God, consequences are coming. When we do not yield to conviction, we are welcoming what? You're going to listen to one or the other. You're going to hear God's conviction or you're going to deal with consequences. Yeah. Usually the longer we go without repenting, the greater the consequences will be when they find us out. That's building the house on sand. So, man, to see a big house blow down? God loves us and he will get our attention by any means necessary. So, it's best when, you're, when you hear his voice to harden not your heart. Amen. Oh, yeah, you hear his voice today. Do not continue in sin. Do not try to adopt, a, adopt sin as a lifestyle. Do not live in fear of always getting caught. Repent and what? Be changed. Be changed. So that you can live the way God intended. Amen. Now, here's Paul breaking down what he meant by castaway. It's a translation that he used, or that we use, but it really wasn't a castaway as much as it was a disqualification. So you're cast away because of disqualification. So imagine yourself as a runner in a race, right? You're training for the Olympics. Folks train their whole lives for that few-second run. You stop eating certain things. You stop having fun with certain folks. You focus on being the fastest in this race. 
So you have to bring your body under some kind of discipline so that it could function in this race. Amen? I can't jump up and run an Olympic race tomorrow. I'm tired when I get off the plane wherever the race is. My feet hurting now. So I'm not going to do well in a race because I'm not ready. I would have to go through months and months of training to get my body to even think about it. So I would have to discipline my body to handle the goal that's in front of me. If there's a goal to win the gold medal, then I got to teach my body what it needs to do and not do so that I can get that gold. Right? But if I get, if I do all of that and I've trained all my life and I've invested everything, sponsors, money, everybody, and I got myself just right and my time is the highest time. No, it's the fastest time. Nobody's time is better. I'm ready to win this thing. But right before the race, I decide to smoke a little something. Take just a little something. And I run that race. And I win the goal. But then they blow a whistle, J. Bryan. And I'm walking around with the medal. And they said, no, no. You got to bring the medal back. What happened? We disqualified you. Why? Because you had something in your system against everything you had done. Against all you had accomplished. All of that training. All of that time. But you couldn't stop your body you couldn't bring it under subjection all the way to the finish line. And you're disqualified. That's what Paul was saying. I'm not going to help all these folks and preach to all these folks without bringing my body under full subjection so that after all of this, I will not be disqualified. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners, it's ESV. In a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize. So run that ye may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath or prize. But we do it to receive an imperishable one. One that never goes away. So I do not run aimlessly. And I do not box as one beat in the air. I have a purpose with this race. But I discipline my body. And I keep it under control. Lest after preaching to others. I myself should be disqualified. Everyone stand to your feet. Yep, this one of them get right church messages. Can we get right church? Amen. Y'all can handle it. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't even going to preach this message. I had elder already lined up or whatever and I had to call him and say, elder, Lord, Lord, I got to speak to us a certain thing. He probably, knowing him, he probably would have preached something very similar. <laughs> That's how it usually works. But yeah, we had to, this is it. I mean, we, we just got to decide. Are we going to finish this race or are we going to be disqualified? Right. Amen. I've come too far to be disqualified. Yeah. Amen. Whatever I need God to do, however I need him to speak, whatever. I want to win the prize. Yeah. So if that's you, if you're with me, you want to come up, we're going to pray right now for forgiveness, for all sin, whatever it is. We're going to make sure that we are where we need to be so God will be pleased with us. We're going to pray for conviction to come upon us. We're going to pray for his Holy Spirit to speak to us and keep us. 
And keep reminding us of what was said today. Keep reminding us of the race we're in. Keep reminding us of the dynamics of this race. Keep reminding us of the control we must have. Keep reminding us when we go too far to the left, too far to the right. Keep reminding us when we open our mouth when we shouldn't close it, Lord. When we need to open our mouth, open it, Lord. Whatever we need to do, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil because we want to be right before the Lord. Amen? So everyone just bow your heads and you just ask him for forgiveness of your sin right now. Lord, just this has to go. You came for it. I knew you was coming for it. I felt like this was the end of it. I felt like it, but now I know the word come forth. I need it out of my life right now. Whatever it is, whether it's in my heart, whether it's in my actions, whether it's something I've been doing with my body, whether it's something I've been doing with somebody else's body, whether it's something I've been doing with my eyes, whether it's lust or fornication, masturbation, pornography, whatever it is, whatever it is, talking to this person, shouldn't be saying nothing to this person, doing Doing something behind my husband's back, my wife's back, whatever it is, there's mercy and grace for it. God is merciful. He did not bring you this far to dump you. He's not a man. He's not going to do that, but he's going to bring a message of conviction to you so that you can just make it right. Make it right. Heal you. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray right now, Lord, as you have spoken this message to us that has convicted our hearts. Father God, that you have spoken this message that has shown us how we were going too far. Father God, we felt you saying it. We heard you saying it. But now we know you were saying it. We don't want to go too far, God. We don't want to walk outside of your area, your circumference of safety. Father God, we don't want to obey our flesh. God, we don't want to live in sin and adopt a sinful lifestyle. Forgive us right now, Lord. We repent and we turn right now, Lord. What we used to do, we're not adopting that again. Who we used to be, we're not going to let it come back. It may have came back or tried to come back, but we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. We put our flesh under the subjection of the power of your spirit. Father God, we recognize every device that the enemy is trying to use. Father God, he's trying to catch us when we're down. He's trying to catch us when we feel bad. He's trying to catch us when we're down on ourselves. Father God, he's trying to catch us with doubt and disbelief. But God, God, we believe in you. And we trust in your word. So right now, God, we pray for your Holy Ghost conviction. Keep us in line. Keep us where we need to be. Father God, protect us. We'll obey it. We'll listen. Keep us, Lord, from the hand of the enemy. So we won't be disqualified. After running this race, God, keep us in the race. After running this race, keep us clean in the race. Father God, keep us in your safety. And we silence the voice of the adversary that is working against us to block us from the prize, to block us from winning the race. We silence it right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever enemy, I mean, whatever avenue, whatever door that's been opened, whatever it is that is allowing the enemy to come in and talk to us, change our minds, change our hearts. We come against it right now in the name of Jesus. We come against it. We lock that door. We close that window in the name of Jesus. We will not keep listening to that. That is the voice of the devil. We will not be snatched out. We will not be pulled away. We will not lose and be disqualified because we were influenced by another. But Father God, we stand tall right now in the spirit. We will overcome. We will do what is right and we will live for you in this hour. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Come on and give God praise in here. Every curse is broken. Every sin is broken. We will not walk and live in sin. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now hug somebody and say, I'm going to win. I'm going to win the gold. Hug somebody and say, I'm going to win the prize. Come on, hug them and say, I'm not going back. 
I'm not going back. No matter what the enemy says, I will not go back. I will not go back. Hallelujah. He won't pull me back into what I was in. He will not do it. But I'm going to win and I will not be disqualified. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some more praise. Come on, Elder. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, hug somebody else and say, I needed this. Thank you, Lord, for speaking. Thank you, Lord, for convicting. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Stopping me in my tracks so I will not lose the prize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.